Hey guys, so in this video, I'm gonna be taking a look at the EcoWorthy 48 volt 60 amp charger. This is meant to be hooked to your generator to charge your battery bank. So some uh, generators are problematic where they have a high total harmonic distortion or THD. And so that can cause issues with different inverters, but items like this can take a dirty power, I guess you could call it, and convert it to DC energy without any issues. So not all inverters have that problem. Some inverters have a higher tolerance for total harmonic distortion, but either way, these are an easy solution. And that is a negative. It tried to start up and then it had an error pop up. E11, maybe they've got that in the book, let me look. And this is the EG4 version of this. This is the charge verter. This can charge up to 100 amps, but also made for 48 volt batteries. So in this video, I'll probably reference the charge verter as well, just in comparison between the two. And the YouTube channel Johnny's Weekends actually did a really good review on this. Actually, I think he's done two videos on it now. In that video, he did a comparison between the two, but I wanted to reference one thing that he mentioned in his video. These chargers utilize a four prong 240 volt input to be able to power this. So it's powered with 240 volt input, but can be powered with 120. And EcoWorthy sends this as an adapter to be able to adapt it down to 120 volt, but it is not wired correctly. The manual here and the charge verter manual for the EG4 go over a wiring schematic on how to make your own 120 volt adapter. I made my own a while back and I've got two different options here, the 30 amp option and just a standard 120 volt outlet option. And that way you can utilize 120 volt instead of 240 volts. So some people don't have a 240 volt split phase generator. So they can make an item like this or just alter the plug itself to do it. This is gonna be a little more expensive, but these were not expensive to build. I had spare wire already, but the plugs themselves on Amazon were pretty cheap. Anyway, I saw a comment from EcoWorthy that said they will compensate people that got one of these. They said to email them. So if you guys do need 120 volt input to this charger, then make sure to contact EcoWorthy if you've already bought one of these or if you plan on buying one of these chargers. Next, the charger does have communication capability. So this can hook into a battery via the CAN port and it can read the state of charge of the battery. All right, I'll bring you guys in a little closer so you can see the charger. I'll show you the outside of it, and then we can do some testing on it. So the charger does come with mounting clips to be able to mount this to the wall, but I do like the fact that it has a handle and rubber feet at the bottom, which is a nice touch. The EG4 doesn't. All you can do is mount it on the wall. Not that that's a huge thing, but I think that's worth mentioning. The AC input wire I have plugged in right now to an outlet on the wall, but that is around five feet long. The two DC output wires are roughly four feet long and they are eight gauge. I would prefer four gauge on this unit. And I realize that you're only going to be outputting a maximum of 60 amps. And the charge verter has four gauge and that is hundred amps. I realize that, but is it that much more money really? Technically the, the, the eight gauge can meet the amperage rating that this is gonna be outputting, but yeah, it seems to be a little light in my opinion. Then again, they are pretty flexible. On the left side of the unit, you have the CAN communication board, and then it says Wi-Fi, which is pretty interesting. I haven't seen anything else on that, but maybe that's something future, I'm not really sure. The right side of the unit, has a 63 amp breaker on it. The options themselves, I think they did a pretty good job with it. You can toggle through here and change your voltage amperage. Yeah, and they've even got a float voltage on there. They've got some timer options also. Keep in mind though, that this does have communication with other batteries, but it doesn't have any dry contacts to be able to start a generator like the charge verter. So the Communication is basically just to see an accurate state of charge or close state of charge, I guess I should say, because it can't be trusted down to the percentage, but it's better than relying on voltage. Voltage works though on the upper and lower end where most people are going to be using the charger to begin with. So if you've got the charger kicking on at a very low voltage down at 48, 49, 50 volts, and it stops at 57, those upper ranges are where most people are gonna use these chargers anyway. 
All right, we're gonna get an eco-worthy battery on the bench here and see if we can get it to communicate right away. I'd actually prefer if these lugs were 3 8 They're 5 16 So there's not a lot of meat on these anyway because they're 8 gauge wire, but you're gonna be able to get on to more. Because, I mean, these aren't designed to just hook to one battery or they shouldn't be. 3 8 you're gonna get a lot of common bus bars are gonna be 3 8 So if you have 3 8 you can always use them on 5 16 bus bars. And you guys might think, well, they've got, it's eight gauge. How in the world are you going to get a three eights on there? Well, that's how, that's an eight gauge three eights lug. So that's what it should look like in my opinion. All right, we are rolling already. Check this out though, guys. I was looking and the charge verter can only go to 57 amps, which actually works fine for all my batteries, but this uh, is 57.6 is what it came as the factory setting. So let's see if we can, how far it can go up. Whoa, <laughs> 58. I don't know if anybody's going to want to go that high. It's got over voltage protection. Let's see how high it'll go. 60. Whoa, yeah. Okay. Anyway. Yeah, if you guys want to balance your batteries, it can go down. It can go up past 60 volts. All right, let's hook this in here. By the way, this is just a regular Ethernet cable. So if you guys need a longer one, you can just buy any Cat5 cable off Amazon. All right, that's hooked in there. And we'll hook in here to the can port. Check that out. As soon as I hooked it up, it's got the BMS signal right there. They are shaking hands. <laughs> that is an odd one there. I've never seen anyone use that for communication before. That's interesting though. I kind of like it. And yeah, it works. 93% on that. That is cool. So I'm going to try it on the RS-485. I would prefer that to be used instead of the can because a lot of these BMSs, I'm not sure on the eco-worthy, but most of the BMSs can communicate with two things at the same time. So it would be better actually if it was communicating with the RS-45 and your can could communicate with the inverter. All right, you guys keep an eye on it while I switch it over to RS-45. So there it is, unplugged. Little handshake should go away, right? Hasn't gone away yet. There it goes. Okay, so that's off. And let's plug it into the RS-45. Zero handshakes. So it does have to be CAN communication. I'll try it in this LifePower 4 V2 here. So this is the version 2. Plug into that. Because I'm using uh, like a 50 foot cable to extend it over to here. Indeed it does. So it can communicate with EG4 batteries as well. Let me hook it to the wall mount battery. That'll be the last test, I guess, as far as communication. This is the EG4 indoor wall mount battery. If we go in here, hook to the can port. There we go. Yeah, that is definitely working. That wall mount battery is low. So let's see. Yeah, it says it's 34%. So while we're charging the eco-worthy battery over here, it thinks it's 34% because I plugged it into the wall mount battery. But yeah, it can communicate with basically probably any battery that uses Pylon Tech protocol. It can communicate with it via the CAN port. Noise level, about the same as the charge verter. Maybe a slightly lower tone. Pretty much, pretty much the same amount of noise though. So this is a good generator to test it on, or maybe a bad generator to test it on, because this has a pretty bad total harmonic distortion, because that if, when I was uh, trying to power my house years ago with it, when we had a storm, all the lights were shimmering. So I ended up Googling it, Googling what the THD on it is, and then, I can't remember, I think it was like 12. I talked about it in another video I did on the other charge verter. 
And I saw somebody else online that said it was around 18 for this model. I don't know. But anyway, it's definitely not down at 5% like you'd want it. So this is definitely a good test here. I'll plug into this generator and get it cranked up. I keep the thing around because it continues to work, though, if I do need it for... I don't know if I need it for work or something like that, if I need a lot of power. And that is a negative. It tried to start up, and then it had an error pop up. Oh, maybe it's working now. Okay. Let's see. Nope. E11. Maybe they've got that in the book. Let me look. I don't see anything in the book. It just keeps resetting with that E11 error. I'll tell you what, I'll put the charge verter right next to it. Let me hook that up. I'll plug it in the same way. See if that charges. Yeah, it's charging fine with this. So I'm charging at 70 amps right now into that battery. The battery's almost full, so it's not going to take that too long. All right, the charge verter is charging at 38 amps right now. So just to verify, let's turn this off. Unplug the charge verter here. I hear the fans kick on when you kill the power. Then chug put the eco worthy charger back on yeah it's just not gonna work let me plug it back into the wall that error should go away there we go you brought you guys probably can't hear it because the generator is going in the background but it just kicked on so I contacted eco worthy they said uh, they don't have a soft start in this and they acknowledge that it possibly is just the distortion in the generator that's causing an issue with the unit here. They said possibly as a fix, I could ramp the current up slowly. So let's see if that works. Let's start it at around 10 amps. That worked. So that's 10 amps. So it is charging. Let's go up 20 amps. That's working. Thirty amps. Looking good so far. Forty amps. No. Not going to work at 40 amps. So the distortion on the generator increases as you bog the motor down. And that's pretty standard across the board with non-inverter generator types. Let's see if we can go from 30 up to 60. No, doesn't sound. No, went out. There's one last thing I thought I might try, and that is the old charge verter, the yellow one without a soft start on it. It's got some dust on him. Let's hook that up and see what happens. All right, I am going to adjust the current down just a little bit on this one because I don't want to uh, slam it with 100 amps of, so that's like 5,500 watts right away. So I might put it at 80 amps or something. Put it at 90 amps. Can you guys make that out? The screen is terrible on this one. All right, that's set at 90 amps. And I'll plug it into the generator here and turn it on. Okay, so when I flip this, oh, yeah, I heard that hit the generator. Must not have kept that preset I put on there because we're right at 100 amps. Poor generator. It's charging right at 100 amps right off the bat. 
And let's see if we can put that to DC. Ah, uh, this is showing 88. Yeah, okay, that's showing 88 here as well. All right, guys, so to wrap things up, I'm gonna go over the pros first, then maybe we can talk about the issues. I do like the settings on this charger. I like the fact that it has timing options even, and then the voltage range does go a bit higher in case you wanna balance things out. And even lower, it goes down into the 30 volt range, so technically you could use this on a 36 volt battery. And then the price is another factor. It usually hovers right around 300 bucks, but it can be a bit lower depending on sales. And then the largest downside would be that generator issue. So a lot of people are gonna be using higher quality generators, maybe inverter generators, and they're not really gonna have an issue. In fact, a lot of people use chargers like this to charge from grid. And then even if you don't have an inverter generator, it may work. I don't have multiple different generators here to test which brand will work with this charger. And I'm glad EcoWorthy got back to me. I think a soft start would help, but that's not gonna be enough. Like I showed you guys, the old EG4 one doesn't have a soft start and it didn't have an issue. So that alone is not gonna do it. So yeah, like I mentioned, that's a large reason why people get these units to begin with or chargers like this so they can charge with their generator and not have to worry about that distortion. So I emailed EcoWorthy back and just let them know, in my opinion, it does need to have a higher tolerance for distortion. So hopefully they can do something about that. So like I mentioned, the price on this is attractive. It's right around half the price of a charge verter. If they could get these kinks worked out, it'd be a nice charger to have. Or it's still a nice option to have. If you guys don't have a generator like mine, you've got some cleaner power to be able to use through it, or you're gonna be charging from grid like I mentioned before, then it's still probably worth it. Like I mentioned, this is in the 300 something dollar range. A charge verter, last I checked, is right in the $630 range. Charge verter does have some other options like quick disconnects. It also charges at a higher amperage, so right around 100 amps versus the 60 amps here. I realized I didn't show testing of that 120 volt adapter, but when I ran into the other issue, I didn't even bother looking at that. But we already know it doesn't work. I mean, the company themselves has already released a statement on that, so. Anyway, guys, I'll put a link in the description below to this charger here. If you guys have any questions, put them below. Thank you for watching and stay tuned. Oh, I think I said below twice at the end there. Am I going to edit that out? I don't think so.